On. We are doing problem 13.3 from the fundamentals of chapter 13. Right now we're just doing uh, equations of motion, you know, Newton's second law, and applying um, everything we've learned in statics and so far in dynamics. So, you know, this problem gives us a, uh, it's a spring problem, right, mounted against a 10 kilogram block. Um, so, you know, it's a block being pushed by this uh, 500 Newton force. And then we want to know, after you push it for 0.5 seconds, what's the velocity of this block, you know, by the time I get to here. So let's see, right here. Exactly right here. All right. So that's what we're trying to figure out. The block is at rest and the spring is uncompressed. The contact surface is smooth. Ooh, nice. The contact surface is smooth. What does that mean? Well, that means that friction that friction is zero. Okay? Which is perfect for us. We don't need to worry about it. So when we draw a free body diagram, we just need to worry about, you know, we have this normal Right, because there's always going to be a normal. There's the weight. Initially, this spring is uncompressed, so we know that, you know, a spring force goes something like this. Right, so if it's uncompressed, this is zero. Okay, so initially there's no force acting on this block by the by the spring, and then we have this force here 500 newtons and then they give us a special right triangle all right um, but we're going to determine what it's you know what's the um, the velocity once it's being compressed 0.5 at up to 0.5 meters so let's begin by um, you know the force in the y direction is not really important so let's just go with the force in the x direction Okay. Oops, that's not. I'm so used to uh, statics. Okay. So let's break the first force down. Let's break this 500 newton force down into its components. Okay. This is 500. Right. And which one's going to be three or four? Three or four. It's going to be four fifths. Okay, and then we're going to have this, the, you know, the y component of this uh, force F. Um, let's just draw a huge. This is not accurate, so don't copy me. 500 uh, 3 fifths. Okay, and you know, late. late um, once once we begin the problem, we are going to have a spring force here, okay, acting on the block, okay? So let's see, what are forces in the x direction? We're going to have, and let's call it F sub k, big F sub k. We're going to have the, well, you know, this we can simplify it, and it, you know, this is equal to 400. Okay, so we're going to have 400. All right, for the guys that are new, or for everyone who's new, we have, I usually put my score in a system like this, positive x going to the right, positive y going up. So we have 400 pushing to the right in positive y, positive x direction, and then we have minus fk the spring force equals max okay and then we have 400 minus fk right is going to be the spring constant k which is 500 newton meter times some distance like you know hooks law pretty much so it's going to be um, let's see, it's going to be 500, um, 
times s. Okay, we're not going to plug in 0.5 there because remember it's going to be changing. It's it's uh, uh, like I would say space dependent or or um, displacement dependent. Okay, so I'm going to say 500 s equals 10 times ax. Okay. Once I'm here, uh, we simplify this a little further. We get that the acceleration is equal to 40 minus 50s. Okay. So here you might run into a problem like, okay, let's just plug in 0.5, right? But no. Um, what we're going to do is we're trying to determine the velocity, so we're going to have to integrate, okay? Because remember, we're not going to, we, we have, um, we don't have constant acceleration, we have a non-constant acceleration term because it's uh, space dependent here. So then we know that acceleration is equal to dv dt. So similar to the trick we did just in the previous problem, Except again, it throws on the curveball here, and we know that my acceleration is space dependent, not time dependent, like this differential is telling us. So you got to use the um, the chain rule here, and we're going to say dv divided by something times something divided by dt. And because it's space dependent, we're just going to put ds here, right? We we've, we've seen that over and over again. So then from here we can say ds dt, that's just, this is just the velocity, okay? And then dv ds, that's what we're interested in, okay? So now we have our final differential equation of solve. Equals v dv ds, okay? Now have the, you know, put the, the correct terms on each side, and we get. <clears throat> let's draw some like crazy arrow. Oh my goodness, my computer's gonna die. Let's see if we can buzzer beater over here. Uh, so we have 40 minus 50 s times ds equals v dv. Okay. Let's draw that again, okay. And then I'm gonna go from zero to 0.5. And my velocity, they say, they're telling me when the, the block is at rest, okay? When the spring is uncompressed. So when the spring is uncompressed, S is zero, velocity is zero. And then we're trying to look for the final velocity, okay? So when we do this, we end up getting 40 S minus 50 S squared divided by 2, evaluated from 0 to 0 0.5. Alright, this is the easy part. Okay? And then V squared over 2 from 0 to, 0 to VF. And then we end up getting, let's see, uh, two, two, two. Uh, two, two. Well, okay, let's see. When, I'm, when I did it, I left it as S. Well, yeah, whenever you, if you do it this way, you end up getting VF, okay, is equal to 5.244 meters per second. But that's after evaluating this. So, you know, plug 0.5 here, that becomes 20 minus 25 times 0.25, okay, because 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25, and then over here we have Vf squared over 2, and then what I have on my notes is Vf, it ends up being the square root of pretty much all these terms, 20 minus, uh, what's, this is 1 over, f oh yeah, it's not an easy one to solve on your head. 
0.25. Okay. Once you work all that math out, um, then we end up getting velocity at s equals 0.25. Sorry, at s equals 0.5 is 5.244 meters per second okay so remember as long as you got here and you you're good with your uh, algebra you're all set okay and then that's it so some of the the, the things you want to identify here is you know the contact surface is smooth so no friction um, and then knowing how to work the chain rule this is super important since we're going to be using this non-stop from now on. Um, okay, and then just get used to always just writing out your, you know, your um, equations of motion. F of x equals, or it's, you know, in, in the next few problems, you know, in the middle of this chapter, it's going to be like uh, instead of being rectangular coordinates, it's going to be cylindrical coordinates. It could be in um, who knows, spherical coordinates, whatever, whatever the book throws at us. Okay. Hope this helped. Thanks so much, you guys, for taking the time to watch the video. Um, if you have questions, comments, drop them down below. Don't forget to like, and uh, if you enjoy, if you're enjoying the content, just subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys.